In today's video, you're gonna make a character animation using dynamics and motion capture data. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, it is Nick here again from Grayscale Gorilla, helping you make better renders in less time. Now, if you haven't already done so, please head on over to YouTube and subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of videos just like this and plenty more coming, and we wanna make sure that you see them. Also, if you haven't seen it yet, check out our Intro to Cinema 4D training series. It's completely free, it's over on our website, and we think it's the best place to learn Cinema 4D. You can get that down in the description below, or also right here on YouTube, I'm gonna try to add one of those cards. All right, let's go right into today's tutorial. Today is all about making a dynamic character using motion capture data. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've already seen part one of our motion capture series. And that's where we find the data and then also import it into Cinema 4D. So make sure you check out that video. I'll link it below before you get started. But if you've already seen that one, we're gonna make this really cool character using dynamics and spheres and a whole bunch of cool lights. And at the end, I'm also gonna show you how I make made this specific animation using HDRI Studio and also Top Coat. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. All right, let's head on into Cinema 4D and let's get animating. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D and this will be a fun one. Um, I wanted to do this one with just the skeleton and not the whole skin. And that's for a couple reasons. In fact, I'm just gonna delete this for now. And if you're following along with that model, you could delete it too. It'll make it a little bit easier. Um, a couple reasons I'm doing this. One is uh, it'll actually look better. The final result will look better because we're kind of cloning onto the skeleton instead of onto the entire object. And the other way, the other reason I'm doing this is because I know some of you, when you import your FBX sequence, yours, uh, it might look more like this than with all the skin and stuff attached to it. So I wanted to do a video that everybody could follow along with. So here we are, we got our skeleton, but of course the problem is uh, you cannot clone onto these invisible objects. These are just joints. They won't accept a cloner. It just won't work. You render, there's nothing there. If we try to put this in a cloner, there's nothing's gonna work. So we have to make this geometry. And I know I did this in another video, but we'll uh, do it anyway, just so everybody can follow along. Here's the way to make turn this into geometry. I want you to right click on the joint chain. I want you to come down and say, uh, select children. This is gonna select every one of these objects. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is go up to the character menu, go to conversion, and go to convert joints to polygon object. That's gonna create a polygon object of all these joints. Next thing you do is you hold down command and select the polygon. Uh, this is going to uh, allow you to select everything at once. And there's one more step. You gotta go back up to character, go to commands, go to bind. Okay, now I know I went through that fast. Feel free to rewind if you missed it. Uh, but now we're ready. The reason we did that is now when we hit play, we have geometry. Check that out, we got actual geometry. Now this is a whole look on its own. If you're following along on these series, I always encourage you to go make your own look with this. Getting the FBX data and getting this stuff into cinema is really an excuse to start to learn some other fun things. So if you see something fun you wanna do with this skeleton, pause it, go do it, come back. But today we're gonna to add some dynamic spheres all along this skeleton here and make it look like his whole body is all made of dynamic objects. So how do we do that? Well, first thing we need is what we're gonna clone. And uh, it, of course, I'm gonna use a sphere for this one. I'm gonna grab it, shrink it down, and uh, that's roughly the size I want. I kinda want big, uh, chunky spheres, like he's in a big sphere costume. You could try it smaller, you'll, you'll need more objects, but somewhere around there looks pretty good. Next thing I'm gonna do is grab a cloner object, drag the sphere inside, and now in our cloner object, I want you to come down and go to object. Um, we want to drag our polygon um, object here that we just built into this little field, and this will start to clone our spheres all along our skeleton. Now, already, this could be pretty cool. Now, when we hit play, nothing happens, right? What happened? Well, actually, something happens. The skeleton starts dancing, but all the spheres do not follow along. Now, this one took me a while to figure out. I'm like, well, what, what's wrong? Like, it should be sticking. Well, it's 
only just a layer order issue for this one. And layer order is um, something you always wanna check, especially with Dynamics and other systems kind of interacting. But basically, it's just not refreshing. And if you take your cloner object and just simply drag it to the bottom of the hierarchy, look at that. That is all it took to have those spheres follow along. So layer order and object order is very important to Cinema 4D. Um, so I don't have an always rule for you that cloners are always at the bottom. Although what I would say is if you have dynamics, you have, or not even dynamics, if you have systems that are not working the way you think they are, try changing their order in the object menu. Okay, so now we have this, which is cool on its own. I mean, this this could be cool. We would bring a, bring a cube in here. Now uh, we would probably shrink that down a little bit. But like, look, we got this really cool thing. We, there's tons of things that we could do now that we have this data in here, right? Um, but what we want are these spheres to not only be on the body, but also be dynamic so that they don't interact and all that stuff. So uh, first thing I want to do and make sure of is when all this stuff um, starts cloning, I don't want it to just clone on the edges of the joints and all this stuff. It's a little um, spaced out too far down here and it's a little too clumped up in the hand. Like the hand's gonna have a ton more because of all the extra uh, bones and stuff like that. So how do you get it to space out more evenly? Well, go to the cloner object and instead of distributing on the vertex, I want you to distribute on the surface. And this is just kind of pick a random place in the surface and just start to fill it up more evenly. So even just like that, you can see this more of uh, like a Michelin man kind of style. It's much more even and uh, we're good to go. Okay, so now what? Well, I don't want these to interact. So of course we need the dynamics tag. Um, let's go to our sphere, uh, go to our simulation tags and add a rigid body tag. And this is gonna keep things from touching. And of course, when we hit play, it's all just gonna explode because it just says, we don't wanna touch, we're out of here. Gravity's taken over and you get dynamics. But what we really want is for them to kind of try to stay where they are. You've probably seen this in a, a few of our other tutorials, but this is a common way to do that. Uh, go to uh, your, your dynamics tag, go to force, go to follow position, and I want you to type something pretty high on this one, maybe eight. So now, what this means is all the spheres are gonna basically try to be where they should be throughout the animation, which is stuck to the, the skeleton. Uh, however, there's so many of these spheres that there's just not enough room. And really, it doesn't look like a human, right? So let's shrink these down a little bit. Let's see if we can get something a little bit more human-like. That's a little bit better, maybe a little bit larger. I think we can get away with something bigger. That's pretty fun. Um, it's also not sticking very well. Like, they're a little floaty. So you may want to play with this follow position. Uh, I'm, I'm actually just going to double it. I'm going to go to 18. This makes a little... This makes the human form stand out a little bit more. It's a little bit more sticky. So I like the looks of this better. I'm gonna add a random effector because I think it looks a little bit more fun that way. Uh, I'm gonna make sure a cloner is selected. Go to MoGraph, effector, random. And uh, I don't want position random, I just want scale. I'm gonna go to scale and say, yeah, make, make these different sizes. Okay, let's back up. Let's kind of see what this looks like as just like a standing human. I say it's a little too large still. I say the overall too large. Now you're gonna wanna dial this up. This is true with a lot of our tutorials and a lot of anything that you're making with clones. You're always gonna wanna adjust scale and then also adjust um, the, uh, the, the size of your object but also how many of them there are. So in this case, I turned down the scale but now there's not enough to really fill it up. So I wanna turn up the amount. And that's feeling more like you know, a good ratio. Remember remember when we started, there was just too many spheres, didn't look very human. So we're just kind of trying to find that balance. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, next thing we need to do is add uh, a separate head onto our, our uh, sphere man here. And I wanted to do that because this was nice, but I wasn't getting a real sense of like that it ha had a head really, you know? Sometimes these smaller clones are gonna kind of uh, attach to the head here. And I was like, well, what if we just take a giant sphere, right? Let's take a sphere. Let's go back to frame zero so we could just kind of set them up. And actually, let's just go forward a frame. I'm gonna hit G. And that's just gonna go forward in the timeline a couple frames. But what if I took this, this sphere up here and moved it, kind of scaled it. I'm just using the move and scale uh, uh, tools here. What if I made an actual 
like giant head for this character. I think I thought that would look kind of fun, like like it's a Disney costume kind of thing. Well, here's how you set this up. I'm gonna go to my side view, just so I could try to angle it onto the neck and and area, right? Because these bones represent the neck and the face and all that. So obviously we have to tilt this a little bit forward to kind of match the perspective uh, and also match the skeleton. But then how do we make it stick when it plays? Well, what you have to do is go find the uh, the bone or the joint. I kind I always call them bones, but they're, they're actually named joints in, um, in Cinema 4D. So you can make all the jokes uh, if, you, if you need to for both of those words. Um, but we're, here's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna go down in and find the neck, okay? Now, I don't know what yours is named. Remember, the beginning of this tutorial, not, not this video, but the beginning series where we import the FBX sequence, I showed you tons of different places, or at least three different places, but you have access to tons of different FBX sequences, so yours may look different, but what I want you to find one of these head or neck or upper uh, uh, joints here to attach the sphere to. And all you have to do now is just drag it as a child. And now wherever that neck goes, the, the sphere is gonna go. In fact, I just saw that there's something called head. Let's, let's put it in the head sequence here. Now, wherever this head uh, uh, joint goes, the sphere will follow, right? So check it out. Now we got something. Let's go back to our other one here. Now we have to make that sphere dynamic. So let's grab the sphere. Let's go to tags, and in this case, we don't want the sphere to be bouncing around. We want it to stick right where it is. We're just gonna choose collider body. That's just gonna keep the other spheres, the other particles, whatever you choose, to from, from uh, intersecting that head. Okay, so now we're going somewhere. We basically have the 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 animation uh, done. Now, uh, I added one more thing, which is a bunch of particles kind of uh, flinging out of uh, of our character here. If you saw the example, uh, and I will show you how to do that at the very end. We'll we'll add that. But at this point, I think we should start to add some textures, uh, some lighting, and and really get the scene going because this is cool and all. But when you hit render. That's not as cool as I think we can make it. Okay, so let's uh, let's go for a real basic look. Um, you know, we get a lot of feedback and email on our, our tutorials, and some people go like, you know, Nick, some of the, some of that stuff looks really good. What you do, but our, my machine can't handle it, right? I don't have access to a render farm and all that. So, what I'm going to give you is a kind of simple way to light your scene um, and make make this character look really cool, and then I'm going to go into a more um, uh, more beautiful way of doing it that might take a little bit longer to render, but it's actually closer to the original. Uh, and then at, at the very end, we're gonna take those clones and we're gonna have other particles kind of like fall off this character. So uh, let's do it, enough talking. Uh, let's delete these materials. This is from our original character that we're not using anymore. And uh, let's just create a new material. Okay, so this new material needs to go on the cloner and it needs to go on our uh, sphere head. You know, we could just drag it right up on the sphere head and there we go, we got some particles. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is open this up. Now I want you to choose what color your character is, okay? You could go in your your, your color here, you, you keep it white like this, just crank it crank it up. You could pick a, pick a fun color here, green, I don't know, pink, blue, light blue. Let's try light blue. I want you to do you, as they say. All right, now we're gonna head into reflectance and we're gonna go into the specular channel. This is on by default when you make a new texture. And uh, as you know, I don't use uh, reflectance, uh, or I'm sorry, I don't use specular a ton, but for some looks, uh, especially real simple looks, it could, it could get you pretty far. Um, so I'm just gonna make a really tall kind of specular uh, and you could kind of mess around with these. But what I want is like this real tall uh, kind of circle here. And, th and this is just gonna act like a little reflection. Basically, fake reflection. That's what specular is all about. Okay, next thing we need is a light. Let's grab a light. Let's move it up. Let's move it around. Let's 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 find out where our character's coming from there. We'll get a little get a little uh, reflection action. Let's hit render. Okay, we got we got something something going on here. Uh, what else do we need? Well, I think we need a fill light. Uh, now. If you don't have Lightkit Pro, we have uh, Lightkit Pro. We have a uh, a light called. Let me show it show it to you. You don't need to use this. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier. A global light 
if you have like it pro i would recommend that if you don't uh check out this light here this gets pretty close to what that is you turn on ambient uh, illumination and then you turn down your intensity and uh this is just going to fill in the gaps right it's just going to light your scene now you got the spheres you got uh you, you, we don't have any floor we don't have any background going on so let's solve that problem here uh let's go ahead grab a, a plane for the floor here uh we'll scale this up oh whoa whoa it went crazy with that scale all right we'll scale it up let's create a new material let's put it on the floor and let's also create a background let's put this material on the background okay so now whenever we change the floor we change the background it's all fine and we got to worry about lighting and all that stuff so in fact what we're going to do is instead of use color channel for the floor i'm going to use luminance this is just going to make it all the same and this is just one of the issues with you know making sure your your background and your plane and everything looks the same the seamless floor now i'm going to show you a little bit later how to get a really simple seamless floor but this uh this is a good workaround especially for these cartoony style looks okay so now what's really fun side, side note what's really fun about 3d and lighting and all this stuff in general is you can go from something kind of ugly which we have uh, into something really cool really quickly and so i just want to show you how fast that could go so let's go grab our luminance uh channel and we could pick another color i mean we can we could go crazy and pick like some cool like uh orangish like dark red thing with the blue maybe maybe it's that you know have fun with it is your is your scene here uh go down to reflectance and just turn it off i don't want any specular on there i just want a flat color so now we have our flat ground we have our our uh, sphere guy here and uh the last thing we want to do with this background on the plane is to add some dynamics to the plane because we don't want anything to fall through the floor we don't want this this person's feet to go through and when we add those particles at the end we also don't want it so now we have our floor we have our character and now we hit render and we still really don't have any great shadows and also this the skeleton's poking through i'm gonna hide it so how do you hide stuff in cinema you hold down option or alt and you click these little traffic lights here and if you hold oh, hold down option and alt, you'll they'll both turn at the same time you just make them both red now you don't have a skeleton um now that's what it should be oh there's a skin there i gotta turn that off there we go boom okay did it okay so now what well we don't have really any shadows we could use a light shadow right we could turn on soft shadows and get some shadowing over here that's not very realistic we could turn on area shadows and uh, try to get some area shadows um uh but it's it's none of this is really going to work so great because just of the scene and the way that it's all built uh what i tend to do with these looks hold on let me leave this on here none what i tend to do with these kind of looks is i'll end up using ambient occlusion this is just a huge kind of trick for this stuff ambient occlusion and you know other videos will get in more into ambient occlusion but look at the difference look at that instant shadows ambient occlusion is fantastic um in fact i'm, I'm brainstorming around I, I, I should make a whole video just ambient occlusion go through the settings and show you guys exactly what it does and how it works but for now check it out instant shadows no no need to worry about it now all you need to do is make these little reflection dots wherever you want them adjust the fill light to to uh make it even brighter in between the gaps or darker to make it more contrasty maybe if we had a, br a darker background this would look better but i like it a little bit brighter here that looks pretty good and now uh what like look at how fast that stuff renders right uh oh we have a slight issue with our clones there we turned off our skin and we don't want to do that all we want to do is just turn it off in the editor so i messed up by unchecking when i unchecked it look at no fun although the skeleton with the head also looks pretty cool <laughs> like another look we could play with okay so there we go uh i'm actually gonna go back to uh more of just a plain uh color here like a white against the background i think it'll look kind of fun and so now what now that we're here um we could look at this and go this this is fine we can adjust this and like i said these cartoony looks are really nice because they render super fast um 
the problem is, is it doesn't look as realistic. Uh, it doesn't have as much nice reflections and all that fun stuff. Now you can go, you know, start to add those things, but this is why we built the tools that we, we uh, use all the time for this stuff. So now let me show you how I made this scene um, more like the demo that you saw at the beginning of the tutorial. And for that, we didn't use the background and the plane. Uh, we didn't use these lights just to get those dots. Uh, we used a couple plugins that I use in almost every one of my projects, and that's HDRI Studio. Let's go ahead and add that. And also uh, Top Coat. Now Top Coat's over here, docked, ready to go. I use it so much, I dock it in the in the interface here. Uh, and HDR Studio Rig is what will give us our background, our, our floor, and also our reflections all in one. It'll also give us render settings, and we'll get to that in a second. But uh, now that we have a floor, uh, we still do need to make a, a plane that is dynamic. Right, so I, sh I should have just kept that other one, but it's really easy to make. You just turn on collider body, and then I'm just going to turn off those traffic lights again so that nothing falls through the floor. Okay, so now what we have is we automatically have a background. We also have uh, some reflections that are going on, but we do need to add them, and that's where top coat comes in. So what I'm going to do is go over to Top Coat with our, our uh, white texture that is our character texture. We go over to Modifiers, and first of all, we could turn off all the reflectance. That includes the specular channel, just basically starting from scratch, right? So now what we could do is we can add reflections right inside of Top Coat so that we can start to see our reflections and start to get a little bit of a cooler look here. So let's add a little bit of gloss texture. Let's hit render and you can see now we're starting to get some little highlights here. Uh, let, let's find a more fun frame where our character's not on the floor. But now you can see we're getting some nicer uh, reflections. We're getting some shadows. Um, and let, let's actually talk about our render presets right now. Um, Let's get a nicer render preset that's a little heavy for me. If we go to add render settings, um, HDRI Studio and Top Coat come with these render settings over here that just make it really easy to, to kind of pick what the quality and what the reflection types and all is uh, in cinema. So in this case, I'm gonna use ambient occlusion. Remember we used ambient occlusion? I use it so much I made a render preset that we could dial up and down with these uh, presets here so that we can kind of test things out in a low setting and then crank it up later down the road. So ambient inclusion low. Uh, now what's going on? I thought I want that white color back. Well, inside of our HDRI studio rig, we have a fill light. And in again, a, a tool I use all the time, instead of grabbing it and making it all the time, I just include it in a lot of our tools. So now we have a fill light we could crank up. That's going to add that lighting in and now look at it our shadows our our reflections everything in the scene here are going to look a little bit nicer now the grain goes away as we start cranking up our settings but i wanted to show you just how quickly we can get this stuff going and what's really fun is we could for example um you know tone down this fill light and just have a darker character here and we could adjust it as we go so uh, while we're here, while it's darker, let's choose a different HDR. This is one of the HDRs that come with uh, HDRI Studio. There's also these collection packs that you can get. And uh, European Holiday, man, this might be one of my favorites. Uh, Church Entrance is always a good one. Let's see what that looks like. You can see the detail, the blue sky, the little entrant entryway here. I really like this one. I'm going to use this. I'm going to crank up our our uh, our um, color here quite a bit actually that's looking pretty good okay again the grain will go away as we uh, turn it to final render settings but again we're just testing to see what we want and then um, we could crank it up for our final render okay so that looks pretty good uh, let's add those particles that I mentioned before so we used HDR Studio, we used Top Coat, and uh, I, I told you in the middle of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to add extra particles that kind of fling off the character as uh, the character dances around, and it's this easy. I am going to duplicate our current cloner. And the reason is, is this cloner already has a lot going on. It's got the random effector already on it. It's already uh, 
it's already got the polygon sequence inside of it. So I'm just gonna like literally duplicate it. The only difference is this cloner, I don't want to be uh, following the object. I want this series of clones to just continuously fling off and fall off and hit the floor. And to do that, we're gonna go into this tag we're gonna come down here to force and we're just gonna turn that to zero. So now clones that are made on the character, and that's a little hard to see because, actually I'll just turn this off. A little hard to see because it's white on white right now. But all these uh, particles are gonna f fall off on the floor. The problem is, uh, well I can see two problems. One is our plane's not big enough, it's actually falling off the edges of our plane, so let's scale that up. Second of all, it, it all happens on the first frame and there's no more particles to fling around. So how do we add particles over time in our cloner? Well, let's go to frame zero and I'll show you a real, real easy way to do this. Um, I'm gonna close top coat just for a second, probably come back to it in a second. This count number, if we turn this count number up over time, more and more particles are gonna appear, you can see them, appear right where we want them, and then they're gonna fall off the character. So how do we do that? We just animate it. So let's start with literal zero, zero count. I'm gonna click that keyframe right next to it to start animating. I'm gonna go to the end of our animation, and I'm gonna say, okay, let's have 2,000 particles fall off this character by the end of the animation. I'm gonna turn on render instances, that's gonna make it go a little bit faster. I'm gonna set a keyframe, and now look, it's animating from zero to 2000. Now if I go back to frame zero and I hit play, check out what happens. All these particles start flinging off. Now, too big, right? I don't want them that big, I want them small. I just want like little dust. And look what else is happening. It's all falling off that, off that object. It's not following the character. And remember what we needed to do? I'm sure you do. We need to put it at the bottom. Right, we need to put it at the bottom so it actually comes off the skeleton. And what's cool is it looks like he's kind of like, like bleeding, bleeding spheres here. And what's nice is they all interact; they're all dynamic. They they fall off through these other objects, and they're all falling all over the floor. Now the floor, I think we need more friction. Let's just go in and turn up some friction here. 80%, that sounds a little bit better. That'll just slow them down so they don't fall all over the place. So it'll stay a little bit closer sometimes. And I think we're looking pretty good. Now, we could go texture these uh, other spheres a little bit differently. So let's, let's quickly build that one. Let's create a new material. And uh, I got to, I just been using the variation shader a lot because it's so much fun. I'm gonna go to uh, luminance and go to our variation shader, is effects variation shader. And uh, this is in version R17 and up is the variation shader. Just for those of you who don't have it, uh, you may wanna look into the random shader and stuff in the MoGraph menu to do something similar. But the variation shader is pretty fun. Uh, I'm gonna do my classic rainbow look here. Pick that rainbow gradient. I'm gonna turn uh, random color down, gradient blend up, and gradient mode to replace. Now, I know I did that fast, but I do that a lot, and you could always rewind it, but you are all set. What that means is you have rainbow colors for each one of your clones. You just have to drag it now to that new cloner. Now when we hit render, you're gonna see all, that, all the clones uh, are, are rainbow. Now what happened to our HDR Studio rig? We just turned it off. Just turn it back on. There you go. Yeah, I tell you that that black look looks looks pretty cool too. We need some reflection on our uh, spheres here. Uh, let's open top coat back up. Let's grab our sphere, and uh, I think what we really want for this one is probably a gloss. I'm going to shift click lacquer, and that's going to bring us two layers of reflection. That'll just give us a little bit of sheen. It's not just going to be that pure clean reflection. It's going to be a little bit of both, a little bit of blurry reflection and the clean one, and that just makes it look a little bit more fun, a little bit more real. Uh, let's uh, kind of find a good camera angle here. Boom. And um, that's looking pretty good. Now, we're gonna turn down the, the setting, or turn up the settings to get rid of some of this grain, but also let's play around with that black look. I mean, this this is what cinema is all about, is, is everything is non-destructive. We can go back and change things at all times. If I want capsules to come out of this character instead of spheres, 
uh, or also with spheres, I could add it into the, the system. And now we got capsules and spheres flinging out. I mean, this is the fun part about about cinema is it just having that flexibility. You're just never locked in anything. So there we go. We got capsules and we got spheres. Classic, but let, let's make that a uh, dark look because it was a little bit of an accident that, that, that it looked like that. But let's go ahead and turn down our fill light. And this is, uh, and let's also use our interactive render regions so just, just so we could see what's going on a little bit. That kind of makes this glossy part look kind of nice. And then if we make our background dark as well, which we could do with HDR Studio Rig really easily, go to Seamless Floor. I'm gonna make the center kind of like a real dark blue and then the edge is real, real black there. And now we have like kind of this dark uh, dancer character, which maybe maybe is a good name, maybe it's a good band name, Dark Dancer. And then we got this this crazy neon uh, the particles flinging out. So there we go, boom, boom, bam. I kind of like the, I don't know, you tell me. Uh, throw, throw it in the comments. Uh, do you like the dark one better or the, or the white one from the demo? Uh, I don't, I'm kind of digging, uh, digging him. Maybe, maybe we'll show both. I like it. Fun. Okay. Uh, I think we covered everything and, uh, we're ready to go. Thanks for watching this one today. A quick question for you before we go. What tutorials do you want to see on the Grayscale Gorilla page? If you have any ideas or requests for us, please put it in the comments below. We always love hearing from you and we get great ideas from stuff that you want to build. All right, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to check out our YouTube page and subscribe and also check out our Intro to Cinema 4D training series. It's a huge training series all about learning all the different parts of Cinema 4D. I'll link it up right here and also in the description below. With that said, we have ton more tutorials here on YouTube and on our website. Be sure to head on over and search for more. Whatever you're looking for, I hope we have a video for it. And again, if we don't, put it in the comments below. I'll see you in another video really soon. Keep rendering everybody, Bye bye Shooting a lot of these videos today. Do I still look awake? Do I need another coffee? Mm, I'm okay. I'm good. Stretch it out. Stretch it out, folks.